your work with ORE Catapult, you've been working with innovations in the field of AI and robotics. How do you see these technologies disrupting offshore wind in the short term, say the next five years? So I think the application of robotics and autonomous systems at the moment is still really being uh, explored by the offshore wind industry. So we're only really at the tip of the iceberg about, uh, with this technology. So the, the disruption that we expect to see in the next five years is an uptake in the use of some of these robotic systems, perhaps with limited or um, kind of basic autonomy built in. So, for example, uh, we're already seeing uh, an introduction of uh, drones being used for remote blade inspection. Um, this type of technology uh, can decrease the uh, health and safety risks which are involved with inspecting a turbine blade. Um, but also have some different cost benefits uh, compared to traditional means. Um, so we really see robotics really coming in and improving the way we can gather data about assets, um, making it the, the job for the current operations and maintenance market safer. Uh, so that's, that's kind of in the short term. Um, a lot of these technologies are what we would say remote inspection technologies. Uh, their application is a bit limited on, on what they actually do, but uh, it tends to be visual or, or sensory monitoring of, of these offshore assets, as opposed to actually physically doing some work to the turbine. Uh, so that's what we would expect to see over the next five years. That's interesting. And how about in the longer term? So in the longer term, uh, what we what we're working on on some of the early stage research that we're involved with is increased autonomy. Uh, so we don't expect this to come in the short term um, because the, the, the maintenance tasks of these robots are still being explored at the moment and until they know uh, what these tasks are and they're predictable and repeatable, that's when the increased automation can come in where robots can undertake the task, decide what needs to be done and do it all without uh, or with minimal human input. Um, so in the next five years, yeah, we expect to see probably uh, an increase in automation. So robots making the decisions and doing more of the work uh, and the operator being able to stand back and do a bit less or even not be at the scene at all. So that's, that's the next phase is um, current technologies are quite reliant on human deployment or human operation. Um, so we still need to get a crew out to the offshore wind farm. We deploy the drone or the, the uh, ROV or whatever it may be um, by hand and, and then operate it next to the device itself. What we're hoping to see in the longer future, so five years plus, is the ability to perhaps operate some of these systems beyond visual line of sight. Um, so there, there are technical and uh, legislative challenges with, with some of these technologies enabled to, being able to do that. Uh, but that's what the aspiration is because that's where really it, it, it reduces the, the risk and the cost massively to, to the offshore industry. Um, finally, the final thing we would expect to see kind of being brought in in five years plus is the ability for these robotics to achieve physical tasks. So move beyond uh, taking photos, uh, taking imagery and taking sensory readings to actually physically carrying out maintenance and repair. So whether that might be um, fixing some wind turbine blade damage or uh, perhaps even repairing welds subsea, we expect those type more advanced maintenance interactions to happen uh, in the longer term. That's, that's really interesting stuff. And thinking about some of the things that might slow that down, specifically, what are some of the commercial challenges that could really put a break on, uh, on mainstream deployment? So, a num I guess a number of the common commercial challenges we come up with is uh, around the, the understanding of the commercial market and landscape of offshore wind. It's quite a complex arena to be in uh, with all the developers, the uh, owner operators, the uh, service providers. It's quite, it's quite a complex landscape and there's not a one size fits all across the industry. Um, so for these small scale innovators, they are often SMEs or, or even at, from an academic environment. For them to, to uh, develop their technologies 
um, in line with this landscape can be quite difficult for them because they don't have that exposure. Uh, so that, that's part of, I guess, what we do at the ORE Catapult is to support these companies, um, educate where we can or make introductions and, and de-risk the technology from both the technical but also commercial standpoint. Um, the other commercial challenge I do see, uh, and we're often asked the question, is, um, is how does this impact on job creation uh, and skills? Um, really the answer is that we're, these technologies should be complementary to, to the job creation and skills market uh, in that we've, we're seeing a massive growth in offshore wind at the moment. Um, and subsequently, we're seeing a growth in that uh, services sector, so the operations and maintenance. Uh, but what we would like to see as robotics kind of come in more mainstream is that the, the skills are, are just kind of changing area. So we will, in my personal opinion, I, I don't think we will ever see a fully robotic uh, operations and maintenance supply chain. There will always be a human element at some point. Um, so we see that market and skills and jobs still growing, but perhaps a section of that, instead of uh, growing um, for the offshore kind of technician base, uh, we might see additional jobs coming into the UK uh, in the area of uh, kind of operating these robotics, maintenance and repair of those robotic systems, uh, analysis of data and the data-driven aspects of robotics. Um, so there's quite quite a wide range of jobs we see this kind of opening up into. Thank you very much.